now let's discuss what is hermitian conjugation of an of an operator i have an operator o which is operating on this sked vector a from left hand side after dual conjugation i will have this where the hermitian conjugation of this o operator which is written as o dagger is operating on this bra vector a from right hand side I can't allow this uh, O dagger operator to act from left hand side on this gate vector because that will be illegal. This is the legal operation of the dagger operator of the Hermitian conjugate operator. Now this is a relation and this is a satisfied for any vector A. This is a matrix element and uh, as we are dealing with complex vector space, so making the dual conjugation of this will give me this with just a uh, complex conjugation sign on top of it. Now I define OA as B gate vector. Now multiplying with the bra vector C from left hand side will give me just CB because OA is nothing but B vector. Again we know it that CB is complex conjugate of BC. Now BC star is equal to CB and in place of B we can write OA and in place of this this matrix element I can write this from equation 1. So making complex conjugate of this relation will give me if I make a complex conjugate of conjugation of this thing so there will be a star here and this star will be gone so I am left with this that is COA complex conjugation of this will give me O dagger operating on A and there is a C vector also this is in equation number N. Now we have already learned that uh, O is a N by N matrix that means it has N square number of elements. Any component any element of that matrix can be classified or can be written as O I K where i is the row number, k is the column number. So complex conjugation or Hermitian conjugation, Hermitian means uh, this operator will give me a real eigenvalue. So complex conjugation or Hermitian conjugation of this O operator will give me O dagger that is also an n by n matrix there will be operator sign here. So O dagger is also an n by n matrix because when I am doing this transformation from O to O dagger I am just uh, making the complex conjugation of individual element and just rows are now columns. So O dagger is nothing but another n by n matrix and any component of O dagger is written is described as O dagger IK. This is for ikth element of this O dagger operator and this is defined as like we define for O operator. So this is defined as a sandwich of this O dagger operator in between the basis vectors Ei and Ek. So I can write this in place of I am just making a, a complex conjugate of this thing. So star is here. O dagger becomes O only, E k becomes E k bra and then E i bra becomes E i k vector. And this is nothing but the matrix element O k i that is the k i th matrix element of the O operator itself but there is a complex conjugation sign here which I have written the st as star here on top of this OKIth element. So if I know the O matrix and if I know the KIth element of this O matrix then I would make a complex conjugation of this 
and I will just switch over this row and column and what I get I get is O dagger operator which is the Hermitian conjugate or complex conjugate of this O operator and ro ro these indices are already interchanged so from this O matrix I can construct this O dagger matrix with n square number of elements What we need to do is the, uh, we need to make the complex conjugation of each element of this O matrix. Then I need to do a matrix transpose. Transpose means rows are now columns and columns are rows. Now let's have a look at the eigenvalue equations of operators. Let's find out what, the, what are the eigenvalues and what are the eigenvectors. Eigenvectors you can think about uh, wave function or states on which the particle is residing at this moment. Suppose O is an operator and Ek is the energy state of any system. Then O operator operating, operating on this k vector Ek will give me Ek the eigenvalue correspond to the eigenstate Ek. That means when, uh, uh, when I am operating this operator on this energy state, the energy value correspond to this particular state is Ek and this is the eigenstate or eigenfunction or eigenvector. That means when the particle is on the state Ek, and when I am trying to measure its energy, the energy comes out to be very precise and it is Ek. This is called the eigenvalue equation of this operator. This is eigenstate or eigenvector and this is eigenvalue and this is eigenvector or eigenstate Ek. Now Ek is not the unique eigenvector. Any vector which is in the direction of Ek may be regarded as eigenvector because uh, if I multiply some constant with Ek, suppose I multiply alpha with the Ek, I get no new vector. Direction of the vector is the same, eigenvector is the same and that is along Ek, only the length of the vector is modified. But eigenvector is the same because it is along Ek. So suppose when operator O operating on this alpha Ek state, this alpha being a constant, a number, will remain unaffected by the operation of this operator and we will directly apply this O operator on Ek state only. And from the eigenvalue equation of the operator O on state Ek, I am getting Ek eigenvector and Ek, uh, Ek eigenvector and Ek eigenvalue. Alpha was already there. So we may also write it as Ek alpha because these two are numbers, two are constants. So it doesn't matter. Ordering of the numbers or scalars are not important. So if Ek is an eigenvector, so alpha Ek is also an eigenvector. Here we can see that the eigenvalue is only modified by alpha times. That is the different uh, difference, but uh, eigenvector or eigenstate remains the same. Now let's discuss about Hermitian operators and eigenvalues. What are the properties of Hermitian operators? Hermitian operators are first described by this property that after making the Hermitian conjugate, the operator remains same. This is the property of the high, uh, Hermitian operator. Second property which is very important is eigenvalues of the Hermitian operators are real. So if we are dealing with our position or momentum variables, uh, we know that position can be imaginary, momentum can be imaginary. So position operator and momentum operator will give me only real values. So those are Hermitian operators. Now let's uh, have a proof of this that eigenvalues of this uh, Hermitian operators are real. 
Let's start with this equation. This is the eigen value equation of this particular Hermitian operator H. H operating on H lambda gives me lambda eigen value. H lambda is the eigen vector. I am just uh, following this uh, eigen value equation of O. And I can write the eigen value equation for H. This is my equation A. And dual conjugation of this will give me this equation B. Now I am multiplying with this bra H lambda vector and equation A. That simply gives me this. And when I multiply equation B with H lambda k vector, multiplying gives me equation D. As H equal to H dagger, I can write H in place of H dagger here. So from equation D, I am getting this that uh, in place of h, I, h dagger, I have written h here. The rest of the things are same. So now my equation d, uh, d looks like this. Now we can see that um, from these two equations, this equation c and this equation, left hand side of these two equations are same. This equation and this equation, left hand sides are same. So we can write that right hand sides are also same. If right hand sides are same, then lambda star h lambda h lambda, that is the scalar product of h lambda with itself, equal to lambda h lambda h lambda. And as a scalar product of h lambda with itself cannot be equal to 0, because if I use the Kronecker delta, that is the orthonormality property of the eigenvectors, so uh, this is nothing but uh, delta lambda lambda and as the two indices of the Kronecker delta are equal, so this is 1 not equal to 0. So lambda equal to lambda star, this is my equation E, which tells me that if lambda is the eigenvalue and lambda star is the complex conjugate of the eigenvalue, then complex conjugate is equal to the real value of lambda, which means that the eigenvalues are real. Let us have the proof that the eigenvectors corresponding to different eigenvalues are orthogonal. These eigenvectors are eigenvectors of the Hermitian operator H and uh, these eigenvectors correspond to different eigenvalues and we need to prove that uh, those eigenvectors which are having different eigenvalues are orthogonal to each other. So as this uh, H is now having different eigenvectors like H lambda and H sigma correspond to different eigenvalues namely lambda and sigma. So we can construct equation F and G corresponding to two different eigenvectors H lambda and eigenvalue lambda and another eigenvector H sigma and eigenvalue sigma. Now I am starting with the Hermitian conjugate or dual conjugate conjugation of this equation, equation G. So what I am getting is this k vector becomes the bra vector H sigma, H becomes H dagger, sigma becomes sigma star as I am making complex conjugate and this bra vector make, uh, uh, becomes uh, this this uh, k vector becomes this uh, bra vector, I am sorry. And when I am multiplying multiply this equation with h lambda, I am getting this, that h lambda and h sigma are the two states, Hermitian operator h is there, sigma star is the eigenvalue and I am getting h sigma h lambda just from this equation, just multiplying this with h lambda on uh, left hand side and right hand side both. Next step is the same as I have just uh, done when I prove that eigenvalues are real. So I have got equation H because I'll, in place of sigma star I can write sigma because I have already proved that eigenvalues corresponding to Hermitian operators are real. Then I am going to multiply equation F with the bra vector H sigma and what I am getting this is this equation, equation number I. 
Now, if I compare these two equations, I will get as the left, two left hand sides are equal, so I can equate the right hand sides also. And if I do this step, it will be sigma minus lambda and h sigma h lambda. That is the scalar product of these two eigenvectors. If I use the orthonormality of these these two uh, eigenvectors, that is, if I write in this place delta sigma lambda and if sigma are lam and lambda they are unequal then this will give me 0. In my question it is already stated that sigma and lambda are different. So, sigma minus lambda will not give me 0 which I have stated like this because sigma and lambda are different. So, as the left hand side the product of this factor this term and this term is equal to 0. So, either sigma minus lambda equal to 0 or the scalar product of h sigma h lambda equal to 0. I have just said the sigma minus lambda is not equal to 0 cannot be 0 as sigma and lambda are different. So, sigma h sigma h lambda that is the scalar product of these two eigenvectors must be equal to 0. And if the scalar product of these two eigenvectors are equal to 0, then we can say that this is these two are orthogonal. Like uh, what we have done in our Euclidean space, like we have we <coughs> did frequently that excuse me, i dot j equal to 0, but i dot i that is equal to 1 that is not equal to 0. This i dot j equal to 0 case for Euclidean space is just like this. Okay. So, in n dimensional space h that is the Hermitian operator has h n number of eigenvalues and in n dimensional basis the construction of this Hermitian matrix will be a n by n matrix that is this operator will have n number of rows and n number of columns with n square elements. That will give me n eigenvalues. We can also say that the normalized eigenvectors form an orthonormal complete basis. Eigenvalues are real and from orthogonality I have just proved that h sigma h lambda equal to 0 which means they are orthogonal and if I make them normalized also. So, orthonormality condition will give me this for sigma not equal to lambda. And if all the n eigenvalues are different then corresponding to each eigenvalue I will have one eigenvector. So, for n different eigenvalues I will have different n number of different eigenvectors and as I have n number of different eigenvectors I have in different directions. So, that means in n dimensional space where n eigenvalues are there and all the n eigenvalues are different that correspond to different eigenvalues in different eigenvectors. So, for n different eigenvectors we have in different directions and if all the eigenvalues are not different if say two eigenvectors have one common eigenvalue or three eigenvector have one common eigenvalue. Then we can say that uh, those two states are degenerate with each other or maybe for the later case the three states are degenerate with each other. Suppose I have a particular eigenvalue for energy E 1 that correspond to suppose H 1 eigenvector that corresponds to H 2 eigenvector for example, that corresponds to H 3 eigenvector also. So, th these three eigenvectors have a common eigenvalue. Then we can say that H 1, H 2, H 3 are degenerate to each other. 